In this example, let's consider a round torsion bar of length L that's subjected to a constant distributed torque, T naught. And we'll go ahead and assume that GJ is a constant. And let's try and find what the rotation field for the bar looks like. And as an approach, we'll go ahead and use the differential equation of equilibrium in terms of the twist rate. So that says GJ phi double prime equals minus T naught. So I'll use primes to indicate differentiation with respect to Z. And I can proceed just like we did with bars acted on by axial forces. I'll go ahead and integrate once. I'll pick up a constant of integration, which we'll call C. And I'll integrate a second time. And I'll pick up a second constant of integration, which I'll call D. So C and D are constants of integration. And I'm going to eliminate those using the boundary conditions. The bar is built in at both sides. So the boundary conditions are zero rotation at Z equals 0 and zero rotation at z equals l. So those are my two boundary conditions. The first boundary condition is going to tell me that d equals 0. And the second boundary condition is going to tell me that c is equal to t naught l over 2. So just simply plugging that information into the last equation here it gives me the two constants of integration. So I can plug those two values back into my expression and solve for phi. And I find phi of z is equal to t naught l squared over 2 gj times z over l times 1 minus z over l. So I've kind of factored the result a little bit. And I factored it in a way that allows me to see immediately that the two boundary conditions are satisfied. So if I plug in z equals 0, it's easy to see that this is going to be 0. And if I plug in z is equal to l, it's also easy to see that I'm going to get 0 out of this. So that was the reason for factoring it in this particular fashion. Uh, once I know what phi is, if I and that was what was asked in this problem, I could also easily back calculate any other quantity of interest. So I could get the shear strains by taking a derivative. I could get the shear stresses by multiplying by the constant. And I can calculate the internal torques also by simply a derivative and a division.